I'm not telling you what the situation is in your body. I mean, that would be against the principles of intuitive eating, right? Each person has to decide for themselves what feels good. What I do is help you connect with what's actually happening and to start to differentiate between things that are going on that are mental activities and what's actually happening kind of in your body. Oh, I mean, it's just, you know, people like to hear good news about the bad habits. So, I mean, if you want to mm -hmm. sell books, you want to make money, um, do you tell people to eat bacon and butter or you tell people to eat broccoli? I mean, it's, I mean, it's really that simple. You want to sell magazines, what are you going to put on your cover? Um, and so uh, that's, I think, one of the reasons these low carb diets, the um, rapid water weight, they call the $33 billion diet gimmick um, that you also see with these low carb diets because you deplete your glycogen stores and you have to, of course, uh, pee out all those ketones. You lose a lot of rapid weight, but you're actually not losing body fat. That's right, really mm -hmm. what we care about. Um, when it comes to weight loss. Um, and of course, just like any other macronutrients, with car you can't talk about carbohydrates, you have to talk about foods. So carbohydrates is lentils or lollipops, jelly beans or kidney beans, right? Those are all carbohydrates, but have vastly different effects on the body. Um, and same thing with protein, where are you gonna get protein? Pork rinds are protein, um, so are kidney beans. Fat could be lard or it could be walnuts. Um, and so you really can't talk about macronutrients in isolation. You have to talk about what foods are healthier, what foods are less healthy. And there are interventional studies. There are studies that actually put this to the test. And you can test, are walnuts healthy or not, period, um, regardless of their macronutrient makeup. I also think it's the lack of starch. So many people, when they're, quote, being good, they go on a diet and think they're just going to mm. eat fruits and vegetables, which are wonderful. You should eat them every day, whether you're vegan or not. But if that's all you eat, you're going to be hungry. And they forget whole food groups like sweet potatoes and beans and quinoa and the starch is what creates the satiety. And that's what often I see in people that continue binging is because they're afraid to eat starch. And we've got to change that. And I love what you guys said about right. this research you did into the hospitals not allowing vegan. When I, in my work where I deal a lot with food addiction, I'll sometimes interview experts that are not plant-based because they they have knowledge in food addiction. And so many of them say, oh, you can't do this without animal protein. Bullshit. Mm. That is just, that, that has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about will. It's about conflicts with our human nature. Dieting conflicts with our basic drive to survive. Mm -hmm. And so what we see as eating disordered behaviors are our bodies trying to protect us. And that turnaround for me changes everything. The binge in response to the restriction is just the body trying to protect you. It's a completely rational, completely understandable response. If you ask people the question, what's more important, calories in, calories out? Um, remarkably, people, in fact, even doctors, you ask doctors that, they say they're equivalent um, or exercise is more important, which is uh, blatantly false. I mean, you just think about it. Like in a minute, you could consume hundreds of calories. I mean, whether you're, you know, biting into a donut or something, hundreds of calories per minute where it can take you know, you can only burn, uh, you know, some people may only burn 100 calories per hour um, doing kind of modern text of the exercises. So you can see how rapidly, um, you know, if you actually calculated, you know, how many times you'd have to run up and down the Empire State Building to burn off whatever, you know, uh, um, you know, calorie dense meal is coming to you, you realize the imbalance and how uh, what we have so much more control over calories in since most of the calories out for people who are not um, athletes is actually just our, our metabolism um, rather than our exercise. So we actually only uh, have control over a small uh, portion of the pie of calories out, um, whereas um, calories in, we have almost totally total control. If somebody is not under the threat of a surgeon's knife or going on medications, we don't have to do this really quickly. We can start getting some of this whole natural food in them in the form of even things like green smoothies, even if there's a little bit of dates or cocoa powder in them, just to get them, their, you know, their endothelials flooded with these greens so that they start really eating some healthy food. So Those they are cells. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that they go in there, you know, nourished and nurtured 
forward without just changing their diet drastically overnight. And that's what happens around the holidays. People are eating this crappy standard American diet and then they go on, you know, like a strict weighing and measuring, you know, very restrictive plan. And it's like, oh my God, you know, no, you don't have to do it that quickly, but just start eating more fruits and vegetables right now. Even if you're binging, even if you're eating crap, make a decision that you're going to eat more fruits and vegetables. The more you do it, the more you like it. And you're so right, because you said earlier about food cravings, what you eat today, you will crave tomorrow. And that is a fact. So if you eat sugar today, you'll crave it tomorrow. If you eat Brussels sprouts today, you'll crave Brussels sprouts tomorrow. So just find ways to eat more fruits and vegetables, especially vegetables. And this is the best thing I think I'm going to say. If we're going long periods of time without feeding ourselves, we're going to have erratic thoughts and behaviors about food. And so we can't address the emotional issues around food without first addressing the physical body, the human body that needs basic things to be okay. It needs sleep, it needs water, it needs food regularly, it needs fun and, and relaxation, right? It, it There's a lot of things that we need that we sort of maybe don't always consider. Um, and a lot of these things influence our relationship with with food and body.